Welcome to part four of Let's Play Crypt of the Sorcerer by Ian Livingstone. At the end of the last part, I was about to read paragraph 339. Here we go. You nervously ride over the brow of the hill that leads down to the lake. There is a deathly silence in the valley, and hardly a ripple breaks the surface of the dark, mist-covered water which stretches into the distance. You quickly scan the lake, but see no movement on it. You wait patiently for almost an hour, and then you catch sight of an object drifting slowly towards the western shore. You strain your eyes and see that it is undoubtedly a raft, and a robed figure is sitting on it. You spur your horse along the shore to the point where the raft is heading. As the raft drifts closer to the shore, you urge your horse into the cold lake and set eyes on the cursed skeleton of coal. Still gripping Razak's sword, as it has done for a hundred years, the skeleton of coal sits motionless on the raft as you approach. You overcome your anxiety and reach out and take the sword from coal. You hear a whispered sigh of joy and watch the skeleton crumble into dust and disappear between the logs of the raft into the lake. After placing the dreaded sword in your belt, you ride off west towards Yastromo's tower, unable to rid yourself of haunting thoughts of the terrible fate that may await you as keeper of Razak's sword. Turn to 165. Okay, so we have Razak's sword. Let's write that down. There we go. And then let's turn to 165. Okay. Consumed by dark thoughts, you do not notice that you are being followed, and only the sound of galloping hoofs brings you back to reality. You look behind you and see an armoured centaur closing closing on you. Your horse is too tired to outgallop the centaur, so you turn to face your adversary, who is armed with a long spear. Centaur, skill 10, stamina 10. Part man and part horse, the centaur revels in battle and is a tough opponent. If you win, turn to 189. Okay, Centaur 10-10. Off we go. Okay, my skill is 12 and my stamina is 9. Um, okay, Centaur 10-10. Okay, that was right, wasn't it? Yep, good. Okay, so 10 plus 6 is 16. I get 22. So 16 to 22. Put some down to 8. Okay. 10 plus 8 is 18. I get 16. 18 to 16. Means he hurts me, so that puts me down to 7 stamina. I'll start a new line now, I think. Okay, next. Um, 10 plus 8 is 18. I get 18. So 18 all, and neither of us hurts the other. So 18 to 18. 10 plus 7 is 17, I get 16, so 17 to 16. That means he hurts me again, and that puts me down to 5. Okay, 10 plus 8 is 18, I get 22, so 18 to 22. Puts him down to 6. 10 plus 8 is 18. I get 19, so 18 to 19. That puts him down to 4. He likes his 18s, doesn't he? Okay, 10 plus 8 uh, is 18. What a surprise. And um, is this fixed or what? No, it's not really. Anyway, and I get 20, so 18 to 20. Again, he likes his 18s, doesn't he? Anyway, that puts him down to 2. 10 plus 7 is 17. I get 15, so 17 to 15, that puts me down to 3, okay, 10 plus 7 is 17, I get 22, so 17 to 22, and um, that finishes him off, okay, that's the end of Mr. Centaur, let's remove any buzzing, should there be any, yes, okay, and let's move on. If you win, turn to 289. Okay, 289, here we come, which is 17 squared. Right, 289. 
Here we go. Around the neck of the centaur hangs a bronze talisman in the shape of a horned demon. If you wish to wear the talisman yourself, turn to 75. If you would rather ride off without the talisman, turn to 304. Okay, we're going to ride off without the talisman and turn to 304. Off we go. Uh, for the next hour, your return journey through the hills remains uneventful until you suddenly hear a girl's cry for help coming from the direction of a wooded knoll not far to the south. If you wish to ride if you wish to, if you wish to ride to the knoll, turn to 127. If you would rather keep riding west, turn to 382. Okay, we're going to ride to the knoll and turn to 127. Here we go. When you get closer to the trees, you see who is calling for help. A young woman is hanging upside down, her right leg caught in a, caught in a rope noose tied to a high branch of a tree. Her hands are tied behind her back, making it impossible for her to free herself. She pleads with you to cut her down and says that she can heal your wounds as a reward. If you wish to cut her down, turn to 258. If you prefer to leave her and resume your journey, turn to 382. Okay, before we do that, we're going to see what she looks like properly. So let's rotate the PDF here. There she is. Blimey, she looks um, wicked. Uh, yep. There we go. Okay, but we are still going to cut her down and turn to 258. Here we go. Now, the woman is soon free and thanks you for rescuing her, but you keep your sword in your hand as many an adventurer in Alansia has died in the past due to trickery. Now, the woman notices your suspicion and says, My name is Jella and I am a half-elf. I am an apprentice to the wizard Kovax of Zengis. He is a specialist in long life and sent me into the hills in search of rare herbs. Unfortunately, I was ambushed by goblins. They took nearly everything I had, but ignored my most valuable possession, a tin of healing powder. You watch as Jella opens a small tin and offers you a pinch of brown powder. If you want to swallow some of the powder, turn to 48. If you would rather bid her farewell and resume your journey, turn to 382. We are going to swallow some of the powder and turn to 48. Jella is true to her word and some of your wounds immediately start to heal before your eyes. Roll one die and add two to the number rolled. Add this number to your stamina score. Interesting how Ian Livingstone says die here rather than dice because in his other books he says uh, one dice which is annoying because it's one die and two dice. Anyway, um, we're going to roll one die and we're going to see what we get. And we get a three. Three add six is nine so therefore we add... Um, oh no it's, no, it's not add 6, sorry, it's add 2. So 3 plus 2 is 5, so we add another 5 stamina points, which is quite good. Not, not too bad. So that adds another 5 stamina points, puts me up to 8, lovely. Okay, and with a tot of that thing, of that stuff, that puts another 4 stamina points on. So I've used all my tots, that puts me up to 12, which is still uh, dramatically below... Um, the maximum, my initial score of 23. Anyway, but that's not too bad. Uh, 12. Okay, so you thank her and bid her farewell before riding off... Oh no, I haven't read the rest, have I? Um, after telling Jella briefly about your quest, she warns you that there are a lot of boulder beasts in the hills and that you should be careful. You thank her and bid her farewell before riding off west. Turn to 382. Okay, so boulder beasts in the hills. Let's write that down. So... There are, whoops, there are boulder beasts in the hills. There we go. Um, anyway, so turn to 382, off we go. Here we are. Now the day passes quickly and soon you find yourself riding down a narrow valley between two rows of hills. This is a welcome change from continually riding up and down hills. However, in the wild lands of Alansia, danger is never far away. Um, standing ahead of you in the middle of the valley is a huge ugly brute some, um, some 18 feet tall, um, dressed in grubby animal skins. Hold on a minute. Six times three. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, 18 feet tall. Dressed in grubby animal skill, uh, skins. A pile of rocks lies next to the hill giant who calls out and threatens to hurl them at you unless you give him five gold pieces to allow you through his valley. Will you? 
give him the gold, turn 287, attack him with your sword, turn 218, or ride up the hill to bypass the giant, turn to 153. Okay, so... What are we going to do? We are going to... We're going to attack him with our sword and turn to 118. Off we go. Okay, you draw your sword, urge your horse into a gallop and charge at the hill giant. Before you can reach him, he picks up a large rock and hurls it at you with all his might. Roll one die. If you roll one or two, turn to 374. If you roll three to six, turn to 173. Okay, if we roll one or two, we're dead. That's instant death. Um, so let's not roll one or two. <laughs> oh, good. So we've got a six, which means we're not dead. If if I had died, I just would have just carried on and marked it as a death, really. There's nothing I can do, because I want to show you the end of the book, and it's a cheap death, and it's stupid. Anyway, 173, here we come. Right. Uh, the large rock flies past your head and lands with a dull thud behind you. The hill giant bellows in anger and reaches for his wooden club to swipe you off your horse. Hill giant, skill 9, stamina 10. If you win, turn to 282. Okay, hill giant, 9, 10. Oops. Right, hill giant. 9, 10. Okay, um, right, so my skill is 12, his is 9, off we go. So 9 plus 3 is 12, I get 17, 12 to 17. Good start, famous last words of course. Put some down to 8. 9 plus 5 is 14, I get 19, so 14 to 19. Whoops. Down to 6. Okay, 9 plus 5 is 14, I get 21, so 14 to 21, puts him down to 4, am I missing, so I, I keep thinking I'm forgetting some sort of thing I can do, I have some sort of equipment, um, no, just about the lightning bolts, there should be a parenthesis here there, I apologise for that, um, anyway, Okay, so let's carry on. Um, he's down to four now. So nine plus six is 15. I get 24. So 15 to 24. I'm so glad my... Um, not that it helped there, but I'm so glad my skill is up to 12 again. You know, it puts him down to two. Could this be a hole in one sort of thing? Nine plus five is 14, and I get 17. Good. So 14 to 17, that means I did not lose any stamina, which is good. All right, puts him down to naught. That's the end of Mr. Hill Giant. Let's remove any buzzing. Off we go. All right, so let's now turn to 282. Off we go. The Hill Giant's possessions amount to one gold piece and a copper bracelet. All right, let's add that to our gold. Uh, typical of Ian Livingstone, we have fought a lot of creatures. Okay. So gold puts me up to 17 gold. That's nice. All right, but what to do with this bracelet? All right. Um, it occurs to you that the giant's cave cannot be too far away if he claimed to own the valley. Will you try on the copper bracelet? Turn to 182. Search for the giant's cave after placing the golden bracelet in your backpack. Turn to 241. Or ride west along the valley after placing the golden bracelet in your backpack. Turn to 67. Okay, we are going to search for the giant's cave after placing the golden bracelet in our backpack. So let's write down that we have a copper bracelet. Copper bracelet. Okay, and let's turn to... I've already added the gold, so let's turn to search for the giant's cave. So 241, off we go. Here we are. Okay, you ride up and down the valley, scouring the hillside of the giant's cave. After half an hour, you find the entrance hidden behind a cluster of bushes. After tying your horse to one of the bushes, you step warily into the caves. The hill giant may not have lived alone. Two torches mounted on the rough stone walls light the cave and enable you to survey the giant's lair. A pile of straw at the back seems to have been the giant's bed, and there is also a rough wooden table on the ground around the table... Oh. 
I'll start again, sorry. Uh, a pile of straw at the back seems to have been the giant's bed, and there is also a rough wooden table. Yeah, I didn't read that semicolon. Um, on the ground around the table lies an ominous pile of human bones. Behind the table you see a wooden chest, and in an alcove you find a strange glass globe which contains swirling smoke. Will you open the chest, turn to 80, break the globe, turn to 367, or leave the cave without the globe, turn to 386? We are going to break the globe, um, and therefore turn to 367. Off we go. Here we are. Okay, the noise of the shattering glass echoes loudly in the cave when the globe hits the wall and fragments. The smoke quickly fills the cave, but you do not have any difficulty in breathing. In fact, the smoke is magical and will now make you immune to uh, immune to any attack by fire. Add one luck point. Okay, we'll do. So we're now... Um, new line. Uh, we are immune to fire. Is it just fire or fire attacks? Immune, yeah, any attack by fire. Okay. Immune to any attack by fire. Okay, that's good. And we also add a luck point, which puts our luck up to nine, which is handy. More respectable. Okay. Um, you may now either open the chest, if you have not done so already, turn to 80, or leave the cave, turn to 386. Okay, we're now going to open the chest um, and turn to 80. Off we go. As soon as you touch the lid of the chest, you hear the sound of scurrying feet coming from inside, a scratching sound like that made by a rodent. Uh, 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 excuse me. A scratching sound like that made by a rodent. If you still wish to lift the lid, turn to 25. Alternatively, you can either break the globe, if you have not done so already, turn to 367, or leave the cave, turn to 386. Okay, we are going to lift the lid, and so we're going to turn to 25. Off we go. 25. Okay, you lift the lid of the chest with the tip of your sword and stand back. Two large black rats immediately jump out of the chest and run towards you. One swipe of your sword cleaves the first in two, but the second claws its way quickly up your leg. If you are wearing armour, turn to 192. If your legs are not protected, turn to 312. Are we wearing armour? Yes, we have a chainmail suit. That is armour, therefore we are wearing armour and we're turning to 192. Off we go. Uh, Unable to grip the armour, the rat falls off your leg and you kill it quickly with your sword. You walk over to the chest and look inside. Turn to 211. Which isn't far away. Here we go. Um, the chest contains two well-gnawed skulls and a small metal box. You take, the lid, you take the lid off the box and find an old piece of faded parchment with something written on it in a language you do not understand. At the bottom of the parchment you see the number 66. Okay, so faded parchment... Um, 66, I will write in the information here. So, faded parchment, uh, colon 66, comma, there we go, good. Okay, that'll be handy for later. You soon tire of trying to read the parchment and decide what to do next. You may either break the globe if you have not done so already, turn to 367, or leave the cave, turn to 386. Okay, we're leaving the cave, 386, off we go. Okay, next. Um, you quickly untie your horse and resume your journey. Turn to 67. Off we go. At the end of the valley, you are forced to ride up into the hills again, but the rest of the day passes without further incident. As night falls, you wonder where to make camp. In the distance, you see the glow of what looks like a fire, but it is now too dark to make out who might be sitting by it. If you wish to ride over to the fire, turn to 183. If you would rather camp down for the night between some nearby boulders, turn to 399. Okay, we're going to ride over to the fire and turn to 183. Here we are. As you approach the fire, you hear a man's voice say, Halt, or I shall loose an arrow at you. It is so dark now that you cannot see anybody. You decide to err on the side of caution and you pull your horse to a halt. The man then calls out again, Wise decision, stranger. Now, tell me, are you a lawful character or a servant of chaos? Will you reply lawful, turn to 308, or chaotic, turn to 270? We are going to reply lawful and turn to 308. Here we are. Now, the unseen man speaks to you in a friendly voice, saying, If you are lawful, as you say you are, then dismount from your horse. Uh, then dismount from your horse, stick your sword in the ground, and come and join me for some roasted duck. If you trust this man and agree to do as he suggests, turn to 103. If you'd rather kick your horse into a gallop, 
to the 354. We are going to trust the man and agree to do as he suggests and turn to 103. Although you are reluctant to part with your sword, you are convinced that the unseen man is telling the truth. As soon as your sword is out of your hand, the man steps out from behind a tree into the light of the fire. He is tall and dressed in a dark green tunic. He pulls back his hood and extends his hand in welcome. You sit down by the fire and feast yourself on the delicious duck and wild mushrooms. Add two stamina points. We will do. Gladly. All right, puts me up to 14 stamina, so that's, that's getting better. Um, the man tells you that his name is... Sim, and that he is a hunter and tracker. There is nothing I cannot follow and nothing I cannot shoot, he says in a jovial voice, while wiping his mouth with the back of his hand. But what brings you to these barren hills? Uh, you decide to tell Sim about Razak and the threat to Alansia. When you have finished, Sim looks at you seriously and says, And I nearly put an arrow through you. I must make it up to you somehow. I therefore offer you my services. I am sure you will find my skills of some use. What do you say? You decide that Sim could be a valuable ally, and you accept his offer. Okay, um, we are now riding with Sim, so I'll write that in the information. So, we are riding with Sim, comma, new line. Off we go. Um, after a good night's sleep, you both mount your horses and ride off west. Sim takes the lead, choosing the easiest and most direct way out of the hills. By late afternoon, you are almost at the edge of the hills when Sim notices two figures crouching down behind large rocks up ahead. Wild hill men, he calls out to you. They think I haven't seen them, and they will jump out at us when we when we ride by. Do you want to practice your swordplay, or shall we ride around them? Okay, before I do, um, read on, I'll just I'll look at the picture there. Lovely. There's the duck roasting. Lovely. Okay. Um, if you wish to fight the hillmen, turn to 196. If you would rather ride around them, turn to 327. We are going to ride around the wild hillmen and turn to 327. Off we go. Uh, yep, yeah, here we are. You turn your horses north and wave to the hillmen who shake their fists at you in frustration. When out of range of their bows, you turn west once again. Turn to 148. Off we go. At long last, you reach the final ridge and gaze out across the Windward Plain. You ride on until nightfall and spend a, a peaceful night in an abandoned, abandoned hut on the northern bank of Silver River. Not long after dawn, you are back in the saddle and riding towards Yastromo's tower. You reach your destination by noon and call out excitedly, excitedly to your old friend as the tower comes into view. But nobody returns your call and the smile drops quickly from your face. You tie your horse to a bush and walk along the path to Yastromo's door. You notice that his herb garden is brown and withered and ugly bushes with long black thorns have quickly grown up, smothering the plants and herbs. Such a remarkable change in a few days puzzles you. You ring the brass bell, but there is no reply. Suddenly, a large crow flies down from a window in the tower and drops a piece of paper to the ground. You pick it up and read a message from Yastromo. Dear friend, sorry I am not here to meet you. I am still busy with preparations. Please ride east where you will find me at a wooden hut at the edge of Darkwood Forest. Yes, Dromo. You tell Sim about the note and then you both hurry back to your horses. As you ride east, you wonder if Yes, Dromo is in danger. After riding along the edge of the forest for less than a mile, that's interesting, that's not the metric system, which is strange for Ian Livingstone, um, especially as he used meters earlier. Uh, a voice calls out from the trees saying, if you are looking for Yaz Stromo, I know where to find him. If you wish to stop to investigate, turn to 237. If you would rather ride on, turn to 68. We are going to stop and investigate and turn to 237. Here we are. Uh, you peer into the forest but see nobody. Suddenly the voice speaks again, saying, No, you cannot see me because I am invisible. I am Suma, a spirit from another magical plane. The forces of chaos against you are great, and I felt it my duty to help you. Yes, Dromo has been kidnapped by the servants of Razak and taken from the hut into the forest to be sacrificed. Ride north from here into the forest and you will save him. A trap awaits you at the hut. That is all I can say to help you. I am allowed to help you once more, and should you need me, call out Suma 11. Okay, so... Um, call Suma 11 if I need help. 
Okay. <clears throat> um, that's my number. Goodbye and good luck. You call out to the Suma for more information, but get no reply. If you wish to ride north into the forest, turn to 377. If you would rather ride onto the wooden hut, turn to 68. We are going to ride north into the forest and turn to 377. Off we go. Oh, lovely. You are soon deep inside the dense forest, which is notorious for its evil inhabitants. Keeping a watchful eye on all the trees around you, you walk steadily on. Soon you come to the edge of a glade and catch sight of poor Yastromo, staked out in the middle of a marked-out pentacle. A loathsome horned beast, its fat, lumpy body covered with green, slimy skin, is walking around the pentacle in a frenzy. You are unable to contain yourself and call out to Yastromo. He raises his head and says, Never have I been so glad to see a friend in my life. Quick, use Razak's sword against his servant from hell. Knowing that you could not injure the vile creature with your own sword, you draw Razak's sword to fight it. Demon spawn, skill 6, stamina 6. If you win, turn to 278. And here we are. There he is, lovely. There's Yastromo behind him. Okay, so demon spawn 6-6. Six, six. Okay, let's uh, make some more of these because I need them. There we go. Okay, so demon spawn, spawn 6-6, six, six. and uh, yeah, so my skill is 12, his is 6, off we go. So, where's the dice? There we go. 6 plus 4 is 10, I get uh, 20, 10 to 20. Put some down to 4. 6 plus 2 is 8. I get uh, 16. 8 to 16. That's interesting. They're both, uh, well, you know, half of each other, whatever, or double. 10 to 20 and 8 to 16. That's doubling, which is mildly interesting, but I appreciate it's extremely boring. Anyway, that puts them down to 2. Um, yeah, so I've hit him twice yet. So, Next one, uh, 6 plus 6 is 12, I get 18. So 12 to 18, that puts him down to naught. There we go, let's end a Mr. Demon spawn. Let's remove the buzzing, should there be any? Off we go, goodbye. Yes, yes, yes. Right, um, if you win, turn to 278. We did, so off we go. Righty ho, there we are, lovely. As the demon spawn drops to the ground, its body begins to shrivel, hissing and steaming, until it is nothing but a pool of foul smelling slime. A shudder runs down your spine as you walk over to Yastromo and untie him. Bravo, the old wizard says with a smile, shaking your hand vigorously despite his ordeal. My magic would not work against this creature from hell. Either I am losing my touch, or Razak, or Razak, whatever, has greater powers than I thought. Never mind, we must not flinch from our task. Now tell me, how did you find the Lost Lake and who is your friend here? You tell Yastromo about your journey and how you came to meet Sim. Yastromo looks pleased and says, Well, I did find out a few things about our friend Razak. He will be a most formidable opponent for you if you get past the minions who protect him. Not only will you have to slay him with his own sword, but his heart must be pierced by the horn of a Gargantis beast. According to fables, the Gargantis is a rare creature that lives underground, but I have not the faintest idea if any even exist. It is virtually invulnerable to weapons, and you may have to use magic so that its horn can be cut off. Only then will it die. Now let's leave this infernal forest and return to my tower, where a friend of mine should be waiting for us. It is not long before you are back at the tower, but there is nobody there to greet you. Strange, mutters Yastromo with a frown on his face. Budron should be here by now. I hope he hasn't come to any harm. He knows where the haunted graveyard is, and that's important. It might help to read the gravestone of Razak's father, Tamal. I think the graveyard is somewhere between Meyerwater and Stonebridge, but I can't be sure. He offers you a choice between staying here overnight to see if Budron turns up in the morning, turn to 341, or setting off now, turn to 157. Okay, we are going to set off now and turn to 157. Off we go. Being very efficient today, aren't I? Yes, this is the video. I did leave a post sort of thing saying that I did record this a few days ago, I think on uh, Friday or Saturday or something, and uh, or, or on Sunday or something like that. And annoyingly, um, 
I forgot to, well, it didn't record my voice. So, and I know how much you love my voice. So I thought, I can't have this video. And I certainly couldn't sort of record my voice over it, which theoretically I could do, but I'd have to sort of time it perfectly and I can't be bothered. So I just thought I'd just delete the video and just redo it. So anyway, here we go. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, Stromo gives you some nourishing food. Add two stamina points. I will do. So two stamina points. Puts me up to 16. Again, getting more respectable now. Um, uh, and then refills your glass file with his healing potion. Enough for five tots. Oh, fantastic. Good. So we now have um, five tots again with naught used. There we go. Lovely. Um, holding on to the reins of your horse, as Dromo says... If you manage to find the haunted graveyard, so much the better, but don't waste too much time searching. After that, ride to the dwarf village of Stonebridge and ask for Bori. He will be able to save you a great deal of time. He lets go of the reins and you kick your horse into a gallop, riding west along the edge of Darkwood Forest. In less than an hour, it is too dark to ride any further and you find a suitable place to sleep. After building a large fire, you take it in turns to stand guard throughout the night. You take the first watch and not Long before midnight, you hear, coming from the trees, the groaning cry of somebody in considerable pain. I'll say that again, in considerable pain. You wake Sim and decide what to do. If you decide to investigate, turn to 244. If you decide to ignore the cries, turn to 345. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm going to use some healing potion and get myself up to uh, maximum health here. So each one gives me four. So if I, well, I'll just drink one because that will take me up to 20. And if I take another one, it will waste one. So I'll use one of them. There we go. That puts me up to 20. That's more, um, even more respectable. So that's good. Anyway, what are we going to do? We are going to um, investigate and turn to 200 and 44. Off we go. Oh, it's another long one, which means, and also half an hour is more or less up, so I'm going to stop the video here and write that next paragraph is 244, unread. And uh, yeah, in the next video, um, we will... Um, yeah, we'll read paragraph 244 and see what the investigation uncovers. So that's pretty good. We now have um, four tots of healing potion left. We have nine luck points. Our skill is still maximum and our stamina is nearly at maximum. That's really good. Um, we have um, loads of information and loads of help on, uh, if necessary. Plus 17 gold. Plus we managed to kill all those creatures. Well... Uh, I killed the demon spawn and the hill giant without, without actually losing any health. But the, the centaur was another story. You kept getting 18 over and over again. He beat me once and twice with 18 and 17, respectively. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope you can join me for the next part. And again, my apologies for the lateness of this video. It's because it didn't record properly. Thanks again and goodbye.